From barely managing to defend his title against the great Volkanovski to getting called out for cheating at UFC 284, here's what the MMA community thinks about Islam's IV usage before the electrifying matchup. Because according to coach Eugene Behrman, Mahakchev took advantage of a flaw. Now before I tell you what he exactly said, I just want to get one thing out of the way. There's nothing wrong with taking an IV to rehydrate after cutting weight since USADA allows fighters to take 100 milliliters of saline every 12 hours. So, even if Islam did take a 100 milliliter IV to rehydrate, it doesn't exactly count as cheating. But that's not the issue here. Coach Eugene thinks there's no way to find out whether Mahakchev took 100 mil or more during the 12 hour period. And at the same time, I can't help but wonder what 100 milliliters of saline would even do. It's definitely not a significant enough amount to give the Dagestanis an advantage over over their opponents. So, at the end of the day, it all boils down to this. Aren't people going to believe he stopped at 100 milliliters? Did Islam exploit the policy by taking more than the prescribed quantity? I guess we'll never find out now. And I gotta hand it to Behrman. His fighter was inches away from becoming a double champion, but unlike Dan Hooker, he's calm and composed and refuses to blast Mahakchev for cheating without having all the facts. Speaking of Dan Hooker, he certainly didn't hold back as he tore the Dagestanis apart for the alleged IV use. The hangman leveled some serious charges. He isn't sitting around like Behrman, waiting for the facts. He's going all out as he tears Mahakchev apart for secretly hiring a nurse to inject him, thinking no one will find out. And that's not all. He took another shot at the lightweight champion, claiming he can't win without cheating. Oh, and in case you're wondering why Dan is so furious, let me quickly remind you. The hangman and Volkanovski go way back. Both of them are teammates and train under coach Eugene. Anyway, Hooker also shared a screenshot of the potential punishment for IV usage, indirectly stating Islam should be suspended for a minimum of two years for cheating in such a high-profile matchup. But again, there's no clear information. I mean, how is USADA supposed to figure out how much fluid he took to rehydrate? It isn't like he's carrying a receipt in his back pocket now, is it? If you ask me, I think this is just going to be swept under the rug. There's nothing anyone can do about it. The most you could do is have Uncle Dana warn fighters not to hire private nurses to administer an IV. And since fighters have the liberty of taking 100 milliliters after weigh-ins, they should only be allowed to take it under UFC or USADA supervision. Anything apart from that should result in some sort of penalty, since it leads to a lot of speculation and drama. But this party's just getting started, because Ali Abdelaziz might have just incriminated himself. After the judges scored the fight in Islam's favor, there was a lot of backlash from fight fans. And amongst the masses, prominent MMA personalities like Nate Diaz and Joe Rogan thought it was a robbery in broad daylight, since Alexander did enough to win the lightweight title. Picking up the pace now. And if I'm talking about people outside the realm of MMA, even rapper Lil Wayne thought it was the wrong decision since the Aussie was clearly the better fighter that night. But that was just the start. Dan Hooker was among the first to call out Islam for using an IV before the matchup. Volkanovski also asked the UFC to look into the matter since taking IV badges was made illegal in 2015. But Ali Abdelaziz wasn't about to let all of this slide. He took to Twitter and shared a post stating how any fighter under the UFC banner is allowed to take three to four liters of IV. Yep, you heard that right, three to four liters of IV. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of difference. From 100 milliliters to three to four liters, I don't think Ali has any clue about USADA policies and procedures. And you want to know what makes it so much shadier? He deleted the tweet shortly afterwards. And MMA journalist Ariel Helwani blasted Abdelaziz for being so disconnected from reality, thinking a fighter could take three to four liters of IV without any trouble. I mean, it's exactly what I said before. 100 milliliters doesn't even come close to what Ali was thinking. Yes, he deleted it because someone, I would think, told him he was incriminating himself with his tweet. And when you think about it, who knows how many times he's advised his fighters to take that much IV, thinking it was within their limits. This raises so much concern since there's a whole pool of world-class 
fighters under his management? Are they all used to taking three to four liters of IVs before their fights? Because if you ask me, the way Ali said it made it seem like it's totally normal for his fighters to do that. And what's funny is Abdelaziz tweeted how everyone calling out Islam is I think everyone knows who's who after that deleted tweet. But yeah, like I said before, whether the UFC will ever investigate Islam's preparations for UFC 284 is a huge question mark. I mean, they have nothing to go off of. They can't use Ali's tweet to hand Mahakchev a suspension now, can they? The best thing at this point would be to leave everything behind and schedule a rematch. I'm just saying that because seeing both of these guys fight again would be such a treat. Hit the ground over the same. It's an overhand left to a trip for Volkanovski on that one. He's really picking up the pace now. And before I give you a final verdict, let's talk about what Rizwan Magomed had to say about Hooker's accusations. Like Dan, Rizwan wasn't willing to hold back either. He straight away called the hangman a jealous loser who has nothing better to do than spread lies. Well, where's the tweet for Ali then, Rizwan? I mean, he's also spreading lies, thinking it's okay to take liters of IV, right? Anyway, Magomed blasted Hooker for being salty and doing all of this just to stay relevant and get attention. I'm not sure I agree with that. Dan might have gone a bit overboard by calling Islam out for cheating without any facts, but things like these need to be discussed. Maybe fighters will experience another rule change really soon, prohibiting them from taking IV without supervision. Perhaps an IV will result in a no contest. Who knows? And while it's good for the game, it isn't good for Islam. So maybe a rematch is the way to go from here. That's the final verdict, ladies and gentlemen. There's no other way to settle this. Both these fighters need to square off again. Or look at it this way. Even though Islam won the fight on paper, he was actually the loser that night. And still the undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world. Volka walked away with respect, love, and thousands of new fans. And since there's a lot of controversy surrounding this fight, fight fans will always remember UFC 284 as a shady event, with the possibility of Mahakchev cheating before the matchup. The best way to shut all that down is with a rematch. No IVs, no drama, just five rounds of violence and competition. Let's see, though. I'm sure the last thing Dana wants is to hold up two divisions for this fight. I guess Islam will have to live with these accusations until he gets a chance to settle the matter once and for all. So, that's everything the fight world had to say about Mahakchev taking an IV before the fight.